Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of the Inside the Dam podcast. This is the final show of the 2022-2023 school year. I'm your host, Cole Clementich. Helping out with Tech Tonight is our own Gage Yost, which stay tuned for a special guest interview tonight there. But we just like to welcome you guys in again, the finale of the Inside the Dam podcast. And we're going to go out with a bang here. So this is going to be the another baseball version of the show. Only two guests tonight, but nothing to worry about. That's just more time to fill with each one. And before we get started here, folks, we just want to remind you about Papa John's. And they have an MSU special going on right now. You can get a large two-topping pizza for $7.99 if you show a valid MSU ID. We thank Admir and the Papa John's crew for sponsoring the Inside the Dam podcast all throughout the entire school year. So thank you guys so much as always. Without further ado here, folks, we're going to get started. And he is our first guest is a junior sports management major hails from Duluth, Minnesota. Derek Wynn joins us. Derek, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling pretty good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. So, yeah, you're a transfer from Angelo State. Talk to us about how your MSU journey came to be and what that process was like. Yeah, for sure. So um, it was my senior year last year at Angelo State, and I realized I wasn't ready to hang up the cleats yet, and I wanted to kind of explore and see what other options there were for me, and thankfully Minot State was an option, and I came up here. Well, awesome. That's really good to hear, and we're happy to have you on board just kind of talk about you know how your season has been going on a personal level i know a lot much going on in the dugout you know but just kind of talk you know having to fill in you know for some of those runners and maybe even gotten some playing time a little bit here and there but uh yeah just talk about how you've been able to help out with the team this season yeah for sure so i'm just uh excited and happy to be able to help in any role i can whether that's starting or coming in later in the game uh whatever we can do to win the game that's kind of the big thing for me so it's just it's just awesome to get out here to have another two years and experience college baseball a little bit more you know before i gotta be a grown up and go do some other things with my life so i'm just excited to be here oh that's awesome and talk a little bit about in the classroom so you are one of those sports management grads out there for Minot State. Talk about that experience a little bit and what have you been able to gain outside of the field? For sure. So with the degree that I'm currently working in, I'm also a graduate assistant for uh, the marketing program. So usually for all of our home games and for some of the away games, uh, we do anything from live tweeting to just helping out with game day activities. Uh, one of the biggest things I think that I do the most is promotions and working the scoreboard, uh, the video board, excuse me. It's something that's kind of interesting to me and something I could see myself maybe doing in the future or, you know, working my way up to the uh, assistant athletic director uh, role somewhere. I think that'd be kind of a great experience for me. Hey, you never know. That's always a nice journey to or nice goal to set yourself there on. But talk to us a little bit about the intricate details of the, you know, grad assisting and all the stuff that you put in there. What are some of the roles that you fulfill and uh, just kind of expand on maybe more of that a little bit. Okay, so uh, usually Monday through Friday we go in. Uh, there's a team of us. We work together. We mainly run all the Instagram accounts, uh, Twitter accounts, making game day graphics, uh, anything that you see on the board in the dome, usually we make those. Uh, the only ones that we usually don't make are if there's like some sort of big-time special event. So like for State B basketball, we didn't make any of those. But anything that you see during the game, that's kind of what we do. Uh, on the promotion side, during a game, halftime game, we'll say, uh, we – literally just go on the court on the field wherever and we try and give away some fun prizes you know try and get some people to do some cool things maybe some things they've never done before and kind of enjoy their time at the game what are those events like for you being able to experience all that north dakota not just mine but north dakota has to offer especially like a state b or any other local tournaments that are happening here in town it's pretty interesting. Uh, I've never seen so many people go to a high school sporting event in my life. I think it's actually kind of pretty neat, actually. Uh, and just to see everybody even come out to our games or even the like the Minot State basketball games, I think those are pretty cool to see. Uh, the stands are pretty packed, and it's just pretty neat. No, that is something you know very, very well that uh, North Dakota treasures a lot. And you know, from all that experience, you know, where do you hope to kind of see yourself going? I'm, I, of course. Baseball has to be a factor, but 
Uh, where do you see yourself going with all this work and uh, with a master's degree? Where do you kind of see yourself five years down the line? Or Oh, five years. Wow, that's a long time. Uh, but, uh... It can start short a little <laughs> bit. And within that time frame, you know, a couple years sure. post, uh, post-grad post school. Uh, for sure. So I, I kind of want to work my way up to being a head athletic director somewhere, kind of be uh, like the Kevin Forty of a school. Uh, I know I'm going to have to start, you know, start somewhere. So I think uh, somewhere in like what uh, Madison used to do for us, Madeline, uh, mm-hmm. that'd be kind of interesting for me. No, that's she's did. She did wonders for the athletic department. So that is definitely something that is, I think, very achievable. And yeah, reach for the stars, man. So, yeah, I'd love to hear that. And going back to baseball here a little bit. So you guys obviously went through new head coach and. How did that change go for you on a personal level? And I heard a lot of good stuff from the other guys talking from shows in past. But how did that? How did he help you personally? And um, yeah, just kind of talk the overall um, temperature of the room. How they've been able to approach him, and how has he uh, approached you guys well? For sure, Coach Boisner is awesome. He's really calm and relaxed uh, every day. You know, he puts us to work, and we try to get better so we can win the next series and make it far in playoffs. Uh, I think he's doing a wonderful job. I couldn't ask anything more out of him. I mean, he shows up every day ready to get us ready, uh, pushes us all every day. He even comes with some of our uh, weight workouts when we have them early in the morning. I know, I don't know about Gage, but I have the 6 a.m. early lift, and he's usually there getting us fired up, ready to go. So I think that's something that not a lot of schools have. Their head coaches when they get up that early and kind of, you know, see what see what the guys are doing in the weight room and see how they're getting each other amped up and ready to go for the season. So I think he's just doing an amazing job, and I couldn't ask for anything else. Absolutely. And that's always a great thing to hear. And, you know, extending on from that here, as you guys putting in all the work and now getting into the games, you guys have one more home series left to go tomorrow against Southwest Minnesota State. Gage, if you want to pull that graphic up, that is the that is what we have for the upcoming home games this week here, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the final MSU home games of the 2022-2023 school year. Derek, just talk about, you know, kind of your guys' expectations going into the final home series of the season. I I mean, it just felt so short. It went so fast, man. I mean, yeah, just talk that. And, uh, you know, how do you guys want to go off with a bang at uh, Corbett Field? Oh, yeah, for sure. It feels like just yesterday we were on our two-week trip to uh, good old Wichita, Kansas. (laughs) Uh, You know, we Southwest Minnesota State's going to be a good team, and I, I think what we're going to have to do is just continue to play our game and do what we do best: hit the ball, have some good pitching, make some plays, and obviously win some games so we can make it further in the playoffs and have a better uh, seating for playoffs. Um, they're going to do what they have to do to try and beat us, and we're just going to come out on top and do what we have to do: compete. No, you guys were definitely in the thick of it. You guys are definitely in the thick of it this season in the postseason race, but you guys went far last year. And I don't know, maybe Gage can speak more on it later, but, you know, just talk, you know, a little bit about how you guys were able to go on such a run. Were you on the team last year, I should ask? I was not. This is my first year. You weren't. Okay, your first year here. So my apologies. But uh, yeah, so that is something Gage will touch on later there for sure. But yeah, the Beaver baseball team going far, going deep in the postseason last year. Uh, But Derek, yeah, just kind of talk more. We're going to step away back from the baseball side and go into some more campus life. So we've been asking a lot of our guests, you know, what are some of their favorite activities? Obviously, MSU's MSU Life's bingo event is always a big one, really famous around here. Um, just kind of talk, you know, what are some things that you like to do? Is it bingo or is there something else? Maybe talk some favorite study spots. What are some places that you like to go through and around campus and uh or even, you know, how do you apply some of your studies to your baseball career? For sure. So uh, actually being a grad student, I usually am not on campus too often because I do all my stuff online. But when I do uh, do my homework, I usually like to sit in the dome and actually sit on like close to those railings. That's kind of an interesting spot for me. Or I just sit in my office uh, in the grad assistant spot and kind of do what I have to do to get everything done. But uh, that that's about all I really know. <laughs> I'm usually not on hey, campus too often. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Working online, you know, talk about that a little bit, you know. The difference between obviously getting away from uh, the COVID pandemic more and more as we get more closer into or more away from all the uh, major stuff that has happened over the uh, past couple of years. But just kind of expand on, you know, what 
difference between online and in person? You know, what are some people maybe that are curious about it or just kind of give us your input, maybe some advice with that? So personally, I enjoy the online classes a little bit more. Uh, It's just nice to not be forced to sit in just like one class for 50 minutes or an hour and a half, whatever the class may be. I can kind of do things at my own pace and just kind of, you know, take a minute to do some homework, take a five minute break, do whatever I need to do after that. Uh, Everything for me is generally either due on a Friday or a Sunday. So if I do have other things going on or different games I need to work, I can get those done out of the way and then go back to my homework or whatever project I'm working on. Um, Just the time aspect kind of helps me a little bit more. I mean, it it just gives me a chance to get everything done and do other things that I might need to do or see other people, whatever I need to do. What's a class workload look like for a grad student like you? For the most part, everything is a lot of reading, uh, especially online. Uh, There's sometimes some tutorials that we get to watch that has some, you know, key things that can help us out for an assignment or for a project that's coming up. But a lot of it is just kind of learn at your own pace. Um... Once again, things are usually due Fridays or Sundays, so I usually get those done. I get them in on time. you got to get them in by noon or midnight, depending on the professor. And uh, it's usually about two or three discussion posts and then one kind of major assignment, which is usually like a two- or three-page writing or sometimes a little bit longer, just kind of on the course content or anything that's kind of happening in the news. And I hear that grad school goes by quarters. So first eight weeks, there's a certain set of classes. Next eight weeks, certain another set of classes – And then just same old, same old for the spring or winter and spring. Just kind of touch more on that for those that are interested in the grad school route and may want to further their education. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever had an eight week class until I came up here. But I mean, it's nice. It goes a little quicker. So you do have to stay on top of everything. But it is nice because after that eight week is done, you have about one or two days to kind of recoup, kind of do your own thing. And then you're back into that next class. Uh, I think it's pretty neat because the classes are also pretty small as well. Uh, There's maybe about 12 to 15 in a class, I believe, so you can kind of connect with people individually and kind of get to learn a little bit about them while working on some kind of uh, assignment as a group, and I think it's pretty cool. I have friends from all over now. I mean, some of the other GAs are from other countries and stuff, and we all kind of collaborate and get to know each other and work on some projects together, so it's pretty neat. Oh, that's very good. Mine is a great place to make connections like that. And Derek, before we get out of here, anything else you may want to mention? Obviously, like I said, you guys play again tomorrow. Maybe talk, you know, how do you guys hope to finish the regular season? And, uh, you know, just kind of what's it going to take to go far into the postseason again? Well, I think something that'll help us is by uh, having more people come to our games. We have a lot of people come already, but the more support we can get, I think that'll help us out even more. And the loyal Beaver fans will be there in spirit, if not. And we're just excited to play two more games at home. Awesome. Well, there you heard it there, folks. Again, Beavers playing tomorrow at Corbett Field, 1.30 the start time versus Southwest Minnesota State, a doubleheader. But, Derek, thank you so much for being on the Inside the Dam podcast tonight and uh, wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you for having me. Yeah, there you have it, folks. You just heard Derek Wynn, one of the junior sports management majors from the baseball team, also playing first and third base. And when we come back here, folks, we're going to have another member of the baseball team on the pitching staff, Procom's own Gage Yost. More details to come later on. Before we kick it to a break, just want to remind you about Papa John's and their MSU special. You can get a large two-topping pizza for seven ninety nine. dollars if you show a valid MSU ID. We thank Admir and the Papa John's crew for sponsoring the Inside the Dam podcast. As always, we'll be right back after this quick break. Hello and welcome back to the Inside the Dam podcast. As always, we are sponsored by Papa John's. Be sure to Grab their MSU special. If you have a valid MSU ID, you show that to them. Show that to them. You can get a large two-topping pizza for $7.99. We thank Admir and the Papa John's crew for sponsoring the Inside of the Dam podcast and supporting us all throughout since October till now. We thank you guys, of course, for all the patronage and support for the Inside the Dam podcast. And like I promised, folks, I'm Cole Clementich back for our second and final segment of the 2022-2023 Inside the Dam season. Special guest here. He's actually one of Professional Communications' own 
and a pitcher on the baseball team. Gage Yost joins us. Gage, you were on a couple shows recently last semester, so yeah, just kind of talk how good does it feel to be back here and uh, how you feeling tonight? Feels nice to be on this side of the of the uh, <laughs> desk for once. Yeah, last time I was on the show, I was interviewing someone else. So, yeah, and we'll we'll discuss a little bit of uh, some projects that because uh, obviously you also being a pro com major, been a lot of stuff that we've been getting done in here or in the computer labs. So yeah, what are I've heard uh, or I've seen the stuff that you and Trevin have been working on. He is also a pro com major. What have uh, you guys been working on? Uh, maybe a few podcasts here and there. Um, what's it like to be able to um, work on those, get all those done, and uh, just the experience overall that of the facilities here? Oh, yeah, I think it's super fun. To, sometimes we'll just come in here. We have a made a little podcast called the Backwards K Podcast, which is just for fun. Nice. We don't stream it or anything, but we'll just come in here and talk about baseball sometimes. There was a time we had our head coach on once, and we just talked about making – basically just making the best MLB team of all time with historical players and stuff. So, yeah, I love working with all the equipment. I think it's fun. I love doing podcasts. I love making package stories, although they're a little time-consuming. <laughs> I, I like the yeah. way they turn out in the end. They look good. What are some of the, I guess, discussion topics for some of these podcasts? I know, like you said, making the best all MLB team of all time. Like, mm -hmm. What are some of the players that you guys touched on and uh, – have you done any sort of debates with Trevin or um, talk more on that just a little bit or any, you know, fun segments that you guys have done together? Yeah. So for the one that we did with our coach, when we were talking about MLB teams. It was a what was the hot topic one? I think we were talking about third base or left field. It was Ted Williams was the topic. I was saying that he was best of all time, but everyone seemed to disagree with me. Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah. We also had one of the freshmen in here saying. A bunch of, he think he said Fernando Tatis was the best shortstop of all time, and I was rather confused about that. I, I still think there's a way to, ways <laughs> to go with that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. A lot of different answers there could be. Could be misconstrued. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I'm, again, you know, there's a lot of you know opportunities to you know kind of produce your own content and such, and also you know kind of getting yourself out there in the field as you're actually one of you and Trevin are both going into playing summer baseball with the Minot Hot mm -hmm. Tots this year and just kind of talk, you know, what what was the decision behind that and, uh, you know, being able to extend your time here in Minot. Yeah, so Trevin and I pretty much just said, like, you know, it wouldn't be too bad if we just stayed in Minot all summer. Um, obviously, this will be the first year the Hot Tots will be a team. So we asked our coach, like, do you think you could get us on that team? And within like a few days, he said that he like reached out to them and talked to them and it's kind of odd, but at first, so Trevin's played in the Northwoods before. I have, I haven't. I played in the Prospect League last year, but apparently this team, um, they thought that they could only recruit D1 people for whatever reason. I've never seen a Northwoods team that's done that, but um, yeah, so they were a little uh, skeptical of having Trevin and I on the team because I think they thought that we weren't oh, talented. Yeah, that we weren't talented enough to be there. But our coach was like, I promise you, these guys, they'll be good enough to compete on the team. I'm sure they'll be one of your best pitchers. So, yeah, and he, then, really, he really had our backs there. Yeah, no, that's good. Good to have, mm -hmm. you know, Coach Boisner stick up for you guys. And, you know, sure enough, they added a Mary pitcher yep. not too long ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that that is kind of interesting. You know, I, of course, you know, D1 pitchers or D1 players, you know, you want to get as many of them. But also, you know, this summer baseball and, you know, all the – top guys are always getting looks or getting scouted you know it's going to be hard to miss out on them but uh yeah kind of interesting there but yeah talk about you know your opportunity to be able to pitch for them and uh I hear maybe some other opportunities like you got to see the jerseys today mm -hmm. and uh I guess yeah kind of talk us through the process more and from your guys's personal level and uh have you met any obviously I, I would assume you'd Maybe I've met some of the people. Just kind of walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, I, I've met. Uh, I think I met the social media person today. I, f I forget her name. Sorry, that's what okay. her name yep. is. But um, <laughs> I believe it's yeah, she, Emily. She, Emily, yeah, that's her Emily, name. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. she was pretty nice. And I got to see the jerseys. I don't know how much I'm allowed to share necessarily because I think they're totally gonna get it. Yep. A reveal soon. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're really cool. They're they're cool. Um. I'm sorry, what else did you ask me? Oh uh, yeah, just kind of walk us through the process of uh I guess from your guys's personal level how the uh recruiting process went. 
Um, obviously, you mentioned Coach Boisner. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah how, how are you guys feeling, you know, during uh, the whole situation? Yeah, so their coach called me not too long after um, our coach had kind of uh, had our backs talking to the management and got us on the team. And, yeah, he basically said, like, Trevin and I will be splitting games this summer. I don't know if that's a done deal, but so basically, like, him or I would start a game and then the other person would go the second half pretty much will be on a pitch count. Um, and yeah, the coach, Mitchell Gallagher, he coaches at a junior college, I believe, in Florida. And he seems like a really cool guy. He was super chill with me on the phone. And it looks like Trevor and I will have big spots going right into the into the season. So I'm excited. No, I'm looking forward to watching you guys and competing out there against some of the, I guess, some of the best of the best amongst, you know, uh, lower end competition of baseball players around the country. But away from that, let's talk your Beavers career. So mm-hmm. far this season, you know, doing pretty good so far. I mean, yeah, 5.24 ERA, second on the team in the spring. You know, this is your third season. You have a 4-2 and two record, but 41 strikeouts. You know, just kind of talk how you've been feeling on for your season going this year and uh, how do you hope to uh, maybe – accomplish reach some of your accomplishments or goals you know Mm -hmm. what do you hope to reach at the end of the season yeah well I think my season started off pretty good my first two starts were fantastic and then after I had a kind of a slump I went through like three or four starts that were just absolutely brutal I couldn't get out of like the fourth inning without giving up four or more runs um so yeah it's I think my ERA went up to like a nine something and then it's it's been the past four starts I've had to do really well in order to bring it down even to a five, which I'm still not satisfied with, but we still have a few games to go uh, in the regular season and then hopefully start a game in playoffs as well. So, yeah, I'm hoping that I could get that down, but if I don't, I'm not not going to freak out about it because as long as the team's winning, that's all that really matters. Always an opportunity in s- Summer Ball League as well, yeah. for sure. But, yeah, I mentioned it with Derek. You guys went deep in the postseason last year. And just kind of talk to us, you know, the recipe of how to get back there, especially with a new coach at the helm. Yeah, I think uh, although we're a little bit lower, or I guess you could say higher of a seed, we're I think we're six right now in the conference. Last year we went into the tournament in fourth place, I believe. So we'll probably be playing a little bit harder competition to start. But um, I feel like Coach Boiser is going to handle – this playoff race a lot better than Scott Yulwood. Not that I'm taking shots at him, but uh, Coach Boisner's like very relaxed and he doesn't necessarily hit the panic button every time something doesn't go as planned. Like if you put in a guy um, after your starter in the bullpen and he gives up a home run or two, like he'll just kind of let the guy try to get his three outs. And then only if things really, really, really start going south, will he um, go to the next guy in the bullpen. And I feel like that's a good thing because you know, you give the guy his opportunity to get his three outs. Like, he's played baseball his whole life. He knows how to do that. And it also saves arms in the bullpen so that you c- you're you able to go deeper into those playoff races. You don't want to waste all your arms right away and get them tired out. So I think he'll do a great job of that. And our hitting's just been fantastic all year. Yeah, you guys. I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah, you guys just hit the single-season home run record. Mm-hmm. You know, for you as a pitcher, being able to witness all those dingers just go out of the park just kind of talk to us you know how what's it like watching all that go down and you know to be able to have a sense of a team accomplishment like that oh it's fantastic I love watching people hit home runs um unless it's off me when I'm pitching but (laughs) (laughs) yeah um totally fair yeah I mean even in some of the bad starts that I've had I there was one start my third start of the season I gave up seven in the first inning I just could not find the strike zone and um we still came back. We didn't win that game, unfortunately. We lost. We got walked off. But I think we hit, like, four home runs that game to, like, wow. bring us to a 14-7 lead at one point. And it's just – usually if you're down by seven in the first inning, that'd be a tough game to come back to. I feel like seven runs should win a ball game, but not against us because when we're putting up as much as 18 runs a game like we have earlier this season, we're a hard team to beat for sure. No, yeah, for sure. And, you know, the Beavers – They've been finding ways to claw back and, you know, pay through some of that adversity. So, and yeah, you're definitely a a part of it along the journey here. Going away from the field here, the baseball diamond, 
talk a little bit about, obviously, we've been touching on some of the projects. You know, I already have seen you in some of the classes mm -hmm. and just kind of explain to the audience, you know, some of the stuff that you do in the major that we have here in professional communication and uh, some of the classes and uh, what all that you do involved with uh, broadcasting. Yeah, so as you know, on the TV show, I'm just a, just a camera guy, but I really like it a lot. I think it's fun. It's interesting to learn about cameras, and I'm finally getting used to like knowing how to work them. Um, I'm also learning how to use that the Adobe Premiere, which I think is super fun. And I agree. Right now, working on like a little, not necessarily graphic design, but like an editing project with Lee. So I think that's really interesting and fun. It's a little complicated, but once you do it a few times, you get used to it and figure things out. Uh, yeah, and then of course package stories. I like making those a lot. I think making like the matched edits as we've learned about and stuff like that. It's just it's it's yeah. interesting to learn about the kind of camera angles you can make that most news people will make or use to uh, create a news story. It's really mm -hmm. really interesting. So yeah, it's a lot of hands-on learning, and with mm -hmm. the package stories, like it's pretty much the stuff you see on the news, like all the footage, the B-roll, and just mixing them all together with good storytelling and yeah that's always a great opportunity there and I often don't get to see you guys enough for I mean you help out with the show you help out with the podcast like this tonight help out with our Saturday showdown in the fall but uh, for you and Trevin and maybe some of the other guys uh, just talk maybe what are some activities that you guys like to do aside from that even like anything with MSU life involved um, just kind of touch on that a little bit Oh yeah, if there's uh if there's anything I can win a prize in, I'll be there. If if it's bingo or I won uh capture the flag in the fall. Oh nice. And I got like a three hundred dollar target shopping spree, which was really nice. I got a new pair of AirPods from that. So. That is sick, man. Yeah, awesome. yeah, it was cool. Um, I don't know, we've it's so busy in the spring, we don't really have too much time. We just kinda play video games, hang out with each other. Um, I don't know, we go me and Trevin work out together a lot. So Good deal. Yeah. Good deal, and I, I know we see each other every day, but not enough. I haven't really asked this question enough to you guys. You know, where do you kind of see yourself in the future with your uh, pro com degree? You know, going a couple years down the line, like one of those. Where do you see yourself in five years? You know, um, what do you hope to um, get out of this degree? And uh, um, I guess even with baseball involved, you know, it's professional baseball, maybe in distance or just kind of um, discuss that a little bit? Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to play um, at least a year of professional baseball. I know for sure I'd be able to play in an independent ball league if uh, if I wasn't able to sign to an MLB uh, franchise team. But um, other than that, I, I don't I don't really know yet, to be honest, exactly what I'll be doing. But uh, I've had a few ideas. So hey, Sometimes, you know, yeah. it takes a little bit of time. So. Yeah, Gage, um, anything else you want to mention before we sign off on out of here? Roll beeves. Roll beeves. Love it, man. <laughs> Heck yeah, I love to hear it, Gage. But uh, thanks, Gage, for helping out tonight and also being a guest on the Inside the Damn podcast. We appreciate you coming on and uh, yeah, wishing you the best this season, years down the line, and even for this summer as well. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being yeah. on. Thanks for having me. And folks, that is going to do it. You just heard pitcher Gage Yost, also an MSU Pro Com major. So I see him a little bit here and there every single day. But yeah, it was good to hear about him, his story, and you know, future goals. And also great to hear from Derek Wynn as well, a junior sports management major in grad school from Duluth, Minnesota. Gage also Minnesota native from Rosemount as well. And folks, that is it. This is the end of the first season, I guess, for the Inside the Dam podcast. I am your host, Cole Clementich. It's been an honor. I want to thank you guys, as always, for tuning in each and every Monday and just being there to uh, watch and support, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And, you know, it's been a pleasure. It's been a joy. And thank you guys, as always. And thank Gage for helping us out because he helped the first semester for interviewing and also a little bit of camera switching here and there. So before we sign off, we just want to give a shout out to Papa John's as they have something special that you guys can pick up on. So if you have a valid MSU ID right now, 
you can get yourself you can head on over there and get yourself a large two topping pizza for seven ninety nine. That is with a valid MSU ID at a Papa John's here in Minot. We thank Admir and Papa John's for their continuous support throughout the entire journey of the Inside the Dam podcast. Before I give my final sign off, as I am graduating with an, this, an undergrad or a bachelor's degree in a couple weeks here, so this is my last show as an undergrad, we want to give out some recognition as some schedules just got released. So why not for the final show release or give give out uh, some schedules here to you guys. So here's the first one for MSU Beaver Soccer. So these are the 2023 home schedules. So you just saw soccer there and feel free to pause the video or stream and uh, take a look at that. But here is volleyball. So yeah, a couple nice games there against all NSIC competition. And then the last one, previewing for what's upcoming here in the fall of 2023, which is when we'll have the next episode, at least planning on coming back this fall. So, yeah, there's the football schedule. Excuse me. And, yeah, folks, that is it. Thank you for being a part of the journey. Thank you for tuning in to watch or listen to the Inside the Damn podcast. For one last time, I'm Cole Clementich signing off. Thanks to Gage. Thanks to everyone who has helped out along in the journey. Thanks to our professors. Shout out to Lee Johnson for being a great broadcast technician and helping out with some troubleshooting with the show, with anything that, uh, any technical difficulties that may come about. Of course, big shout out to MSU Athletics for providing us all the guests for the entire series and I don't think I have anything else to mention. So, yeah, thank you guys once more. It's been an honor, been a huge pleasure. Thank you guys. Take care. As always, have a great rest of your week and, of course, summer as well. That is it. Thank you for watching the Inside the Damn podcast.